once you have accurately adjusted your camera's focus, it's time to decide the exposure. Take a few shots of 15, 30, 45 and 60 seconds duration. The correct exposure will depend on the light pollution at your site, the ISO speed that you have set and the aperture of your lens. As you take an image, bring up the histogram of the image at the back of the camera. The hill of the histogram will mostly be on the left side of the graph. Now see if the histogram is touching the left y-axis. If it is touching, then you have to increase the exposure. Do increase the exposure and see if the hill of the histogram separates the left side of the graph. This is your correct exposure. Now sometimes if you are shooting a wide angle shot and have a bit of earth too in the field of view, then you will see two hills in the histogram. Since the earth would generally be darker than the sky, the left hill belongs to the earth. The right hill belongs to the sky. From here, it depends if you want to correctly expose the earth portion, then you have to increase the exposure even more. But if you want the earth to remain darker, then you have your correct exposure and you're all set to go. Here, uh, a question would arise that uh, what if I want to give more exposure to have a longer star trail? You see, when you have your correct exposure set, then you should go for multiple images of the same exposure. Then you can join these multiple exposures into one star trail photograph. Framing your picture. Shooting star trails near the celestial pole will get you circular trails. These are circumpolar stars that never go below the horizon. If you frame a region near the celestial equator, facing the east or the west, for example the belt of Orion, you get straight lines rising out of the horizon at an angle. The angle signifies your latitude on earth. On the north and the south side of the celestial equator, trails will curve towards opposite sides. On the earth's equator, for example Colombo or Nairobi, stars will rise vertically and both celestial hemispheres will are visible fully. Also want to put some interesting thing in the foreground. Tall trees, lake, mountains, road, your telescope. I leave the imagination up to you. Why not use several cameras side by side, shoot star trails individually and finally stitch a stunning panorama. A three camera panorama will very simply show how stars move in the dark hours. You can time your exposures as well as the non-exposures that is when the camera is closed to build a star trail in Morse code where the dot is a small exposure and dash is a long exposure. Gaps between dots and dashes are small, gaps between letters are medium and gaps between words are large. Mind you, the Morse code exposure can run very long even for hours together. Prepare yourself well for this kind of photograph with all the times written on a chart. Get a companion and go to a dark spot to click a Morse code star trail photograph. Keep a diary of transient events happening in the skies over your city. For example, conjunctions between two or three planets, occultation of a planet by moon, lunar and solar eclipses, elongations of the inner planets Venus and Mercury, full moon near perigee, planets and asteroids near deep sky objects, oppositions, 
transit of Mercury and Venus across the Sun and many other such events. A calendar of such events for the entire year is available from Aperture Telescopes. Also keep a tab on the location specific events like the Iridium Flare, International Space Station Flares, Satellites crossing the face of the Sun and Moon. Don't forget, lightning also makes for a very nice sky photograph. Here is a novel idea. Build a timescape instead of a star trail photo from the same exposures that you have done in the field. You could also place your camera on a moving platform like this one and shoot a sequence of photographs which later can be made into a movie. After you have completed your field work, it's time to move indoors and process the captured photographs using a nice, some nice free and paid software. But that would be a subject for another presentation though. I hope you enjoyed today's webcast and I do hope I was able to clear a few doubts and present some new ideas before you. I also hope you like the sky images in this webcast. All of them were clicked using camera and tripod. The presentation has been uploaded in three segments on YouTube. Search for Joys of Astrophotography on YouTube. Thank you.